as a person starts to go into other signs and symptoms of cold related emergencies, specifically we're going to talk about one of the most damaging problems and that's frostbite. We, cut, we can literally lose limbs that way, have skin damage that's irre irreparable, lose parts of fingers and toes, ends of the nose, ears, and we have some real practical ways to try to prevent that. Well, first and foremost, it's not getting that cold, but it can happen before you even realize it. The pain, the tingling uh, that you feel on, your, on the skin surface is the first signs of, of freezing tissues. The, the skin itself is trying to give you the alert that, hey, I'm being damaged and I need some help here. Um, getting out of the elements, getting to a place that's warm is going to be ideal for, the, for rewarming those tissues before they get to a permanent damaged state. But um, making sure we've got our skin covered with a scarf or a face gear that's specifically made to protect your face, making sure you don't have exposed skin, um, and then recognizing the signs and symptoms. When it goes beyond the pain to actually numbness, and if you look at the actual skin itself, it's white or starting to turn gray, that it feels frozen, it's wood-like, and then there's no feeling at all, we're probably going into the frostbite or full thickness freezing stages, and when it needs immediate treatment, we need to get them out of the environment, get them into a warm area that they are going to be able to be sustained in, what I mean by that is, if we are in between stations, we know we're going to have to refreeze again or potentially refreeze to get to the, to the um, definitive help location, we're not going to rewarm these body parts. We're going to leave them frozen, whether they're their feet, their toes, or whatever, and we're going to walk them out to, of this dangerous situation until we get them to the definitive place of care. Um, if you are there, either it's a permanent cabin or it's a place where you could actually call emergency medical services or get them to the hospital, that's when we're going to start rewarming these body parts potentially. The, the goal is going to be to get the temperature of the water to be about around 100 to 105 degrees Fahrenheit. We don't want to bump the tissues into the sides of the, the container that you're warming them in. Um, and we're going to submerge those, those frostbitten body parts. Now the rewarming, be, be aware, is going to be extremely painful potentially. Normally in the hospital they'll do it under the guidance of pain management. But again, we need to try to save this body tissue, rewarming it and getting circulation back to that, these frozen um, tissue pieces, the blood is frozen. Uh, getting that all back circulating again is going to be key to, to, the, to the saving those body parts and extremities and tissues. Uh, once the, the, the skin or the body parts are rewarmed, now we're going to try to be careful of breaking blisters that have formed potentially, making sure to put sterile gauze between the fingers or the toes, and then gently wrapping that with a sterile gauze, and then getting the person to emergency medical help. Um, keep in mind that the goal is not to rub the body part. When we rub those frozen tissues, we break loose ice crystals that can cause death or serious health problems, as well as serious damage to the tissues. We're just destroying that tissue that's frozen. So no rubbing. Uh, by placing their body parts on our warm body, we run the risk of going into hypothermia by exposing our body as well to the elements. The goal is to get this person to a point of safety for the sake of saving their lives and then saving their limbs, if at all possible. Now, lastly, keep it in mind that when you're out in the elements, plan for the worst. It's as easy as actually buying some of these seven hour to 12 hour warmers that are chemical warmers. They just shove in your pockets. You can put them in your boots, you can put them in your gloves, you can put them under your armpits, around your neck, keeping that body temperature up. It's also great as a first aid supply so that if you come across someone else that's gone down because of cold related emergencies, you can put that under their armpits, put them in their gloves and help them along as well.